Hey guys, Kevin Muldoon here. A few months ago I did a review of an Asus smartwatch called the Asus Zenwatch. You may have noticed in my latest reviews that I haven't been wearing the smartwatch and that is what I want to talk about. I actually sold the smartwatch about six to eight weeks after buying it and in this video what I want to do is basically explain three reasons why I sold the smartwatch. So at first I really really loved this smartwatch. I really loved having this technology on my wrist and you know I'm a bit of a I'm a, a little bit of a gadget junkie in that respect you know a little bit of a geek when it comes to certain technology when it gets smaller and you're amazed at all this technology is in a smaller device though I found that the technology it just isn't there yet I found that the smartwatches just now you know obviously I'm talking about from an Android point of view but from what I've read it's the same problem with and uh, with Apple smartwatches as well I just feel that the technology is kind of a half step or a step behind where it should be just now. They haven't really got the long battery life that they need. They don't have enough RAM and the processor speed doesn't seem as good as it should be. It kind of reminds me of the problem that um, the problems that Android had in the beginning. I had, I think, what was it called? The HTC Hero, I think it was called. Whatever it was, I had, it was a second ever Android smartphone and I remember buying it. And I switched from a Nokia or a Blackberry. And in the beginning, Android, you could see it had potential, but it was really slow and it was just a pain to use. And I, I kind of felt like that in the end as well with the Asus uh, Zen Watch. At first, I thought it was quite quick. You know, I, I kind of assumed that, you know, I would get used to the, you know, how everything worked and I was, I was navigating the menus. Everything seemed okay. But after a while, it just, you know, I kind of realised that I was, that it is a little bit slower than I thought it was. And it sounds, it sounds silly saying that because, you know, I, I had the exact same, you know, watch as I did, you know, the month before. But there was a few things that I kind of noticed. For example, I think in, I think in my review, if I look back, I spoke about how if you, you can use your smartwatch when you're out. So if you're out with friends and you're having dinner, you know, if you you can quickly check to see that you, if you get any messages and then you can just, you can open it up and your hand over the smartwatch and then you can kind of skip and just, quickly read your smart uh, your messages without being rude and you can read things quickly. In reality though, you're just as quick taking your phone out, you know, and just sitting your phone on the table and then your phone will flash when you have a new uh, message for you to read. You know, like with the time that you've you've opened up and then going through the menu, you don't even see the full message. It's kind of it's kind of the same amount of time as it would to just bring your phone out. And you're still being rude, you know, if that was something you were worried about. And there's little things like that I think it wasn't as quick as it should have been. Another uh, thing that I mentioned was it was buggy and there was a lot of bugs in the system. Again, this is something that seems to be a problem with all smartwatches at the moment. And from what I've read, other Android smartwatches have had kind of similar problems. The problem that I had with the Asus Zen Watch in particular that really started to drive me nuts was that it wouldn't sync with my phone correctly. So it would connect with my phone using Bluetooth I wouldn't turn off Bluetooth and yet, you know, like perhaps once a week it would stop connecting to my phone. So you go into the ACES website and you look at support, you find this is a common issue, you see lots of people complaining about it, but the only way that you can fix it is by resetting your smartwatch. Now that doesn't sound like it's hard to do and it's not. All you do is you go to the, the settings menu and you go to reset software. The problem is when you do that, you're removing all your settings, you're removing all your preferences and then you need to reinstall all the applications, all the apps that you downloaded, etc. again. It doesn't take a huge amount of time. You're talking maybe 15 to 20 minutes to do it. But this smartwatch was marketed and it was bought by me as something that would complement my lifestyle. But when you're having to reset the software and you know, you're having to go back and set everything up like once a week, which is what was happening to me, then it doesn't bec it's not something that complements your lifestyle, it's something that hinders your lifestyle and becomes nothing but a pain in the ass. You know, I, I bought I bought the, the smartwatch for about £115. Um, yeah, £115. I sold it, you know, six to eight weeks later on eBay for about 60 I think it was. And, you know, you take the £10 fees off from eBay, so I, I walked out with £50. But I knew that the watch was going to sit there and just gather dust because it, it, it started to annoy me in that respect and it started to it started to like uh, as far as complimenting my lifestyle 
It wasn't. It was starting to annoy me. That's that's the the. the that's basically it, you know, it was starting to really annoy me. And, and when technology starts to annoy you, when it starts becoming a pain to use, then you're as well just selling it because you're not going to use it. The second reason was charging. Now, I didn't think that charging would be something that would annoy me. I didn't think it would be. Because the way that I looked at it was, I've got my phone charging at night time, you know, I've got the charger sitting there. So what big difference is it to just charge my watch at the end of, end of the day? You know, you just take your smartwatch off, you set it there, and you charge it. And if you look at it that way, it isn't a big deal. You know, it's just one other thing you need to charge. And as silly as that sounds, you know, it did become, it did become a pain in the bum to do that. You know, I'm used to charging my phone. I've got chargers for my phone. I've got one downstairs in my living room. I've got one in my car. I've got one. I even keep a little uh, USB connector thing in my my wallet. I've got a charger up the stairs. So I can charge it all the time. Whenever I go to stay, you know, at a friend's house or I'm away, girlfriend's house or anything like that, I would have to take my phone charger, but then I'd also have to take the, the smartwatch charger as well. It shouldn't have been a problem, but it was. I, I know it sounds stupid, but I didn't, when I, when I think about it now, even if I was going to buy a smartwatch in the future, it doesn't seem like it's, it's something that's going to be an inconvenience, but it is. And there's a few reasons for that. Is like One is the... You know, as I said, if I was going to stay somewhere else, you need to take another charger with you. So you're now carrying two chargers instead of one. You now need to look for two power points instead of one. That kind of, just little things like that. But the, the battery life kind of, you know, kind of ties in with this problem. The watch that I had actually had about a day and a half of battery life. And looking at the reviews and the specifications of other Android smartwatches, that's actually towards the higher end of battery life. A lot of other ones, um, I think the Moto 360, that only got like a day, as far as I know. Um, but so I had slightly longer battery life, but for me, it, it, it still didn't feel enough. Now, if you charged it every night, then you'd be fine. But a lot of the time, I'd look at my, 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 my watch and it would have like, say, 80%. You go, well, there's no point charging it at night. Okay. And then I'll take it off. And then when I go to use it, you know, it's like 30, 40%. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I need to charge it. But then when I go to charge it, it's, it's, it's kind of like, like two o'clock in the day or something, although I don't have time to charge it, I'll need, I'll need to do it later. Again, this sounds silly when I see this, when I see that, when I think of this in my head, it makes sense, but when, I, when I'm trying to explain it, it's difficult, but there's just been occasions where you think, right, okay, I'll grab the watch and I'll go out, I'll wear it tonight, but then it's not charged, and you're like, oh, I need to charge it. Things like that, and it was just a little bit annoying, and I found myself, because of the slowness of it, because of the, the bugs, because of the charging time and having to charge it once a day, I just I started wearing it less often and then at one point I realized I hadn't worn it in like a week and a half now perhaps I, w I could have started using it again but if I really look back at all the technology that I can use on a, on a regular basis I use most of the things all the time you know I use that camera I use that camera I use that audio recorder I use this webcam I do have certain things that I keep just as backup you know headphones and things like that but you know if something if it's something I'm not using, I'm going to try and be active and sell it because if not, the price is going to go down. And that's especially true for Android uh, smartwatches at the moment because it's in a market just now that's it's in its infancy and the technology just isn't there. As I said, it's, it kind of feels like it's a half step behind. You know, things aren't as quick as they should be as far as the navigation menus and things like that. And um, I think, so I realised that if I didn't sell it now, I would get next to nothing to later. So I thought, I'll just sell it. I'm not using it, I'll sell it. The last reason, and I mean, I guess I guess this is kind of one of the, the biggest reasons that I sold it was that the novelty wore off. And as I, I said at the beginning of this video that, you know, I'm a big technology guy, I'm a geek when it comes to gadgets. I will never see something, you know, if I see a laptop that's smaller and more portable, I'm amazed and I want to buy it. But the practicality um, isn't really there, you know, as far as charging it every day. You know, my Garmin running watch can go a couple of weeks without having to charge it. And it just, a lot of the things, you know, at first I, I really liked it. I liked, I liked having this on my, um, on my wrist. I liked having um, the ability to do certain things, but the novelty of doing those things soon wore off. And I'll give you a few examples of that. The, um, when I was driving my car, you know, I'd have the, I've got an older BM at the moment. So it was like the old classic um, cassette deck plugged in at my phone with the, with the wire. and But I was using... 
was listening to music through Amazon, you know, I've got Amazon Prime, so I was listening to music through Amazon Music, and I could use the watch to skip tracks when I'm driving. A lot safer, you can go like that. Sounds like it's, um, it sounds like it'll save you time, so I used it a few times, but really you still have to, you know, open the watch up and then get to the app and things like that, and it just, it just didn't work as smoothly as I thought it would be. And I ended up, it'd just be quicker, you know, when I get to traffic lights, just to open up my phone again and then just skip the track that way. It just, is, it was a lot quicker. And, you know, another cool feature I really thought I would love would be the Google Maps integration. So the Maps integration is something that I think a smartwatch is perfectly designed for. So, for example, you know, I'm going for, you know, into Glasgow and I'm going for an interview or I'm going to a party or an office or a meeting or something something where I've got the general idea of what it is, but I don't know exactly, then what I can do is, you know, I can use Google Maps to go and find the place, you know, just type in the postcode, etc. And if you've got your smartwatch connected, you know, it can direct you and it'll show you the, the directional arrows so that when you're walking, you just do this, you go, oh, it's this way. And that's really cool. That's kind of high tech futuristic. That's something you think you would see in a sci-fi film where you're walking along and it's like turn right, turn left, and it gets you to your location. The reality is, you know, setting that up is a bit of a pain, you know, you need to kind of um, connect to your the app, you need to put the app on and then scroll around and then go and write and then set it up. It's not a huge amount of hassle, but the time it takes for you to do that, even though it's not, you know, it's not a huge inconvenience really if you look at it, but it's more time consuming than actually just taking out your phone and going, oh, it's just over there, you know, and just looking at Google Maps that loads instantly on your phone. And that's why I think, it, it just feels like it's not quite there yet. I think we're about a year or two away from smartwatches being a realistic proposition as far as something that you should own or think something that you should perhaps look into buying. At the moment, really, we're kind of like the same as like Android was in the beginning where things just aren't there yet. There's not enough processor speed. There's not enough RAM. Things are just a little bit slow there. And as far as the syncing between your phone and, and your, it, your phone and the watch, it works. It just... It just doesn't seem as refined as it should be. You know, I don't know if this is a problem with the app developers, but, you know, if you look at Android Wear, it just, it's just a little bit slow and a little bit buggy, and it, it's just not there yet. So I think we've got another year or two of developments um, before we start seeing a more refined product. And if you look at um, tech websites in China, I always, you know, occasionally I look at these tech websites from China. I'm always kind of keen on buying little gadgets from there and then seeing how they perform. And there's a lot of smartwatches coming out. There's a huge amount of smartwatches coming out from China, from all tech brands. They're all, they're all developing smartwatches. So the marketplace is going to be full of them in the next year or so. We should see prices coming down as, as a result of that. And I think already we're starting to see different markets for it. You know, at the start, you know, a lot of the smartwatches were kind of in the same, you know, uh, ballpark range, you know, as far as pricing goes. But now we're, trying to, we're, we're starting to see, like, luxury smartwatches and budget ones and, you know, the ones that do everything and things like that. I think in a year or two it's going to be good. But I wanted to do this video because when I did the review before, I was kind of quite enthusiastic about it and I was a huge fan of it. I really was. I was using it all the time when I was out, wearing it every day. But as I say, the, the novelty quickly wore off and little annoyances and the fact that I had to charge an extra device every day, it became a little bit of a pain. I'm sure there's people out there who are using smartwatches and you love them. But for me, I just don't think the technology is there just now and it's going to get better. So if you're, if you're in, a, um, in a position where you're thinking about buying a smartwatch, whether it be Apple, which quite frankly is way too expensive to buy in my opinion, because you spend 400, 500 pounds or dollars, that's going to be worthless in two, three years time. Or an Android smartwatch as well. You know, it's the same position. I'd, um, I would perhaps recommend you know, go and check it out first. Um, but the thing is, as I said, the, the problem is that when you try this out in a shop and you'll look at this, you'll love it and you'll use all the menus and you, and you, will, you will love it. But I think when it comes from a using it on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a lot of software issues. Of, you know, as I said, the battery life. I really want a smart a smartwatch to, you know, have battery life that lasts at least a week, ideally two or three weeks or a month or something. I don't want to have to charge it every day because the watch is something... You know, it's something like your wallet, you know, you just have in your pocket. You, you want to just grab your watch and put it on. Your phone's different. You use that all the time. That's essential. But as far as a watch, I, I do want longer battery life. So I'm hoping that we see longer battery life. Perhaps we need, 
you know, a breakthrough in some sort of technology or, you know, power usage. But if you, if you look at on the market for smartwatches, I think I would maybe recommend either trying it in a shop and seeing how you go on, but I'd maybe lean towards buying something secondhand at the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but they do look great. There is a lot of uh, developments going on with these things. You, there's news about new smartwatches every single day, so please do keep your eye on it. I think in the next year or two, we're going to see a lot of developments with it, and I'll perhaps buy another one. At the moment, it's just something that it, it wasn't what I thought it would be. It's not as good as I thought it would be. It's too buggy. It's too slow. But I would love to hear what you think about this. I know a lot of you guys have, have got a smartwatch yourself. I'd like to know what you think about it, whether you agree with me on this or whether you think some of my comments are a little bit silly or perhaps um, maybe I had unrealistic expectations about what a smartwatch is or what it does. I think a smartwatch um, should complement your lifestyle. That's Basically, that's where I'm coming from. It should complement your lifestyle. It shouldn't be a hindrance. That's how I view a smartwatch. It's not something that's essential. It's something that should complement your existing phone and it, it complement your existing lifestyle. I don't think it's there yet, but I'd love to hear what you think. Please do leave a comment below. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And till next time, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.